Ja, egal. Ja, ja. <lacht> so. I still need this. My German is not good enough. So. Channel 2 for English. 2? Yeah. Would be good. Yeah, perfect. Let's go. Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, We'll start our press conference today with Jose Mourinho. Following this will be our player, Ryan Sessignon. Um, if you do have a question, please raise your hand and we'll get to you. Um, who'd like to go first? We'll go with, start with Mike over there. Thank you. Jose, you, you, can't, you can't move up or down in the table, but could you tell us in your own words why this is an important game? Why you, uh, will you be fielding a strong team in it as well? It's an important game because we represent Tottenham and that doesn't matter the game, the objectives, the ambitions, the competition. Tottenham is Tottenham and uh, that gives us always a sense of uh, responsibility. But we, we cannot finish first. We cannot have that privileged position in the draw of playing against seconds on the table, on playing the second match at home. So the, the result is not, um, is not going to change anything. Um, one thing that I'm not having is time and when I say time, I say also time to, to know my players well, to know all my players well. And this is also a great opportunity for, uh, for some of them to play, uh, for some of them to, to show what they're capable of. A player in competition is different than a player in training. And some of my boys, they didn't have the chance for me to play or to play many minutes in these five, five matches that uh, I've played since um, I arrived. So we tried to mix a little bit these, these factors. We, 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 need, we need to play for Tottenham and that is responsibility, but at the same time there are other, there are other things. And um, the Premier League is a special competition is not just the number of matches, it's also the intensity and the quality and the pressure and the competitiveness in every match. We are going to have, as you all know, an incredible number of uh, fixtures until the new year. And I think uh, it's understandable that uh, we are going to make a few changes and we are going to rest a few players and give opportunity to others. Okay, take a question here, if you raise your hand, you can get the microphone to you, thank you. Uh, Mr. Mourinho, I read that you learned some German in the last couple of months before the job in Tottenham. Um, what was your motivation and how difficult was it? Maybe you can answer in German. No, not yet. <laughs> The motivation is to learn. I try to learn all the time and I was not, as you know, working for a few months. And uh, curiosity and, uh, you know, it's culture. I would love to be here and to answer you in German, which in this moment, of course, I cannot, but I would love. Uh, so that was that was the motivation, it was not related to, to jobs, as you can probably think, and you wrote at the time, but not at all. Okay, take a question at the front here from Dan, we'll move to Paul after that, so Dan, raise your hand. Right here, thank you. The next one will be from Paul. Thanks. Hi Jose, Hi. this squad's obviously been together for a long time at Tottenham. These players have been together for four or five years in some cases. 
There's been a lot of talk about needing a, a new chapter or, or a refresh over the last couple of seasons. When you look at your squad out here with guys like Cessignon and, and Walker Peters and uh, Troy Parrott, did you see perhaps a, a glimpse of the future of, of the next phase of, of, of Tottenham? You know, I think uh, if I remember Tottenham since I come back to to England for my second spell, I think this is basically the profile. You have a fantastic group of uh, of players, and then you have always some younger players coming. It's part of the DNA of the club. It's part of of the um, the culture. It's also part of. Uh, the passion and the relation between the fans and and the team. I think the the Spurs supporters they they like to see the the young boys coming from from the academy, a different profile of some other big clubs in in English football and also in world in world football. So this is part of us. So the mid age in our squad is is really low. Of course, there are players in. In the best years of their careers, in in the mid 20s, in in the early 30s, uh, we have lots of players. The nucleus of, of the team is based on that. But then you have, as you were saying, some of of the names that you were speaking are, of course, players that we that we care. And you look, for example, to the last match on on the weekend, and when uh, I had the opportunity to make changes with. Uh, with the result without any kind of pressure. I had on the bench players like uh, who was on the bench, Ericsson, uh, Lo Celso, somebody else I don't remember now. But then the opportunities went to to the under 20s, uh, which I think is, is very important for them. Jose, of your handling of young players and your handling of academies in the past, at maybe at Chelsea and United, do you think that's been fair criticism? And are you determined to prove at Tottenham that it, it was unfair? Yeah, it's very important. Uh, Scott McTominay is only the, the best player at Manchester United. Rafael Varane is one of the best players in the world. Is fair criticism, yeah. <laughs> Take a question from Paul just here. Raise your hand, Paul. Thank you. Hi, Jose. Uh, people seem to be enjoying this version of Jose Mourinho's son says you're always making jokes and smiling. Dyer says he's enjoying playing for you. Can you give us an idea what the reasons are behind those early connections with the Spurs players are? No, first of all, I am I am the same guy in every in every one of my of my jobs. I'm the same person. I can be happier, less happier. That's normal. I can love more or less the club, more or less the players, more or less the structure around me, but I am, I am the same. Uh, so I don't think there is many, many difference on, on me. Probably the differences are in the players and in the club. <laughs> the players are guys that I enjoy very much to work with them. I feel them very coachable. I feel them in need of uh, of my experience, in need of my of my support, and I enjoy very very much because uh, I always say that a player that is not coachable or doesn't like to be coached, the concept of of team, you lose it. You lose a little bit that concept of uh, of a team. And I arrived mid mid season, without pre season, without four, five, six weeks to work to know the players to develop the team. So we have to do everything while we are running. <laughs> we don't stop, and we have to do everything, a little bit of everything at. Uh, at the same time, so very, very important for me that the players are coachable, the players are are open, the club has a structure that uh, helps me in in every area, and I'm very happy. I I, I keep saying I keep saying that, and uh, you know, even the bad result against uh, Manchester United and a performance that was that was not good didn't make me 
uh, change my my approach. I think the boys they need me, and and my job is to try to try to help me, to help them. It's not about me. People speaks about uh, Jose Mourinho updated and version this and that. It's not me. Is is them, and I'm here just to try to to support them. Okay, take a question if you raise your hand. We got a microphone to you. Then we'll go down to Neil and into the back at John. Welcome to Munich. Thank you. Um, Mr. Mourinho, two short questions. Uh, can you imagine to be a Bayern coach one day on that place right now, uh, in the future maybe? And um, is Bayern Munich calculable because of the performances of Lewandowski, you as a coach? Because Bayern Munich is very depending on his goals. Thanks. You know, I don't imagine myself in Bayern Munich only for one reason, which is I am so happy with my job that I don't, I don't look to the next uh, step. Um, I think I will leave Tottenham one day when uh, uh, the owner, uh, Mr. Levy, eventually uh, the supporters and the players wanted me to leave because I don't think to leave at all. But that's the only reason I say I don't see myself in such a big club like uh, like Bayern Munich is. Dependence on Lewandowski. I think it doesn't matter the, the dimension of the club and the teams. You always depend on your best players. The better the team is, the less you depend. But you always depend. And you think our team is the same without Harry Kane? It's not the same. Um, And I think that's the reality of the things. He's such a good player. He scores so many goals. He's always there when, when the team needs him. That, of course, they depend a little bit on, on him. Um, but the coach, I think, he thinks different than me. And uh, I leave Harry Kane at home. And I expect Lewandowski to play. Okay, take a question from the front here with Neil. If you raise your hand, Neil, so they... Maybe he gets injured play. and doesn't play in the weekend. So it's better he sings twice and doesn't play him. Hi, Jose. Um, hey. Have you spoken to the players about the, the manner of the defeat in the home game against Bayern Munich and are they likely to be scarred by the experience? It's a good question. Um, but no, I forbid any image about it. I watch it. I watch it a couple of times. Me, my staff, the analysts, we try to go through through every detail of that match, but not one single image for the for the boys. No, not at all. We are going to focus more on us than on um, than on Bayern. We are going to try to develop our model of um, of play. Of course, with different bodies, with different faces, with different players. But that's there is a certain way that we we try to play football and to try to develop our our principles of, of play and we are totally focused on us tomorrow and less on uh, on Bayern. That's that's the way we are going to approach. Okay. Take a question from John at the back. John if you can raise your hand. Thank you. Bit of a walk. This last Keep question. High, John. This last one? No. no? We're gonna do Two more after this, John, and then finish here. Okay. Jose, it was uh, three weeks ago today that you were announced as the new manager. In that time, what's surprised you about the club, the players? Are things continuing to surprise you? No, the club didn't surprise me a lot because uh, before I signed, the, the couple of meetings I had with, with Mr. Levy, He was very organized in the way he presented to me the, the vision of the club and the project and, and everything in every area. And everything was, was real. Sometimes you, you have amazing presentations and then the reality is a different one. In this case, it was not a surprise because I, I found the club very, very well organized. And uh, as asked, As I keep saying, I just need in some details related to the to the closed circle of, of the team to make people understand the way I like to work and make people adapt to me. 
but the real structure and the, the great dynamics are, are there. Very, very happy with that. The players are the players that everybody knows, you know, good players, young players, as I was saying, very coachable. Um, with some little problems, which is normal, that I, I have to try to to attack them. Let's let's say that. But a pleasure to work with uh, with the guys. John Cross down here, and then we'll finish again with this gentleman here. Okay, and that's the last one, John. Uh, Joe, sir, just going to ask you uh, two two things really. Could could you ever imagine that seven two ever happening again? Was it complete freak of freak of nature? And also, just you, you've got such an amazing record in this competition because the the players had such an experience last season. Have you seen in the last three weeks enough encouragement to really believe that you can go a long way in this competition this season? When when I arrived, I focused on on two matches. The first, West Ham, and the second, Olympiacos. And the objective there was to put everything in this in these two matches with with one objective in relation to the Champions League we have to qualify. And of course, if we can qualify in that game and not be here now thinking that tomorrow we need a result to qualify, would be the perfect situation because it would allow us to focus more in the, in the Premier League. So the, the, the first step is done. We qualify. We are going to be in the, in the knockout. The fact that we are second, the fact that we are second diminishes a little bit the possibilities in the last 16. We play the second match away. We play against a group winner. Clubs like, uh, I think, Barcelona, uh, who else? Uh, Paris Saint-Germain. The best will be there waiting for us. It's going to be difficult for us. I think it's going to be difficult for them. When you reach quarterfinal and everything is in the same basket, the teams, the teams from the same country, the possibility of a draw at home and away, I think is the moment where uh, everybody has the same chances. So I think our, our big, 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 big step will be the, the first knockout. Okay, take the last question right here. That will be the last one. Thank you. Um, one question about your history with the stadium. Um, in 2005, I think, you played here the first time with Chelsea, but normally you have not been allowed. In the Olympic Stadium. Uh, it was in the Olympic Stadium. But did you remember um, this game, the story about it, um, that you left the, the stadium on a special way, I think? Yes. Um, in here, in Munich. This, yes. In Munich, yeah. Could you tell us the story? Yes, I can. Um, I was suspended. I was in the stands. Um, I couldn't communicate with with the team, and I decided the best way to do it was to go to the hotel and watch the game in the hotel and communicate from the hotel. When I arrived in the hotel, it was already 1-0 for Chelsea. We were winning already. Lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you.